if I spoke about it, if I did. Even movies that win Best Picture sometimes begin with narration. In this case, drown narration. What did I tell you about her? Sounds like this story has a lot of pronoun game implications, so I would rather not hear any of it. And the monster who tried to destroy it all. Let me guess, the monster was Michael Shannon since his name appeared right when you said that. The water in the tub is already almost at the top, but Eliza has time to wander out into the living room, then the kitchen, allowing for the establishing shot of the theater below, then cook some eggs before she gets in. This floor should be leaking well before it does later in the movie. Eliza figures out the shape of water in the first five minutes using masturbation and an egg timer, so why should I watch the rest? Also, agonism. Look, I know Eliza doesn't have much money, and this room's in a rough area of town, but she's otherwise tidy and fastidious. You're telling me she hasn't even attempted to paint the walls in here? Or did she? And the color she chose was named Guillermo del Toro movie. The movie theater downstairs stores some of their films in the apartment complex? I gotta admit, it's a great detail for the production design, but how much sense does this make? This may be set in the middle of a metropolitan area and all, but this is a ton of f***ing traffic for 11pm. So the shop is closed for the day, but they leave the TVs in the window on all night? The electricity bill is gonna be outrageous, right? Whistling while on public transit. Zelda actually seems to be trying to remove something here, so it brings up the serious question of how there's this much dust on the underside of this fuselage. My Bruce, all he had going for him was animal magnetism back in the day. Damn, we sure are getting a solid round of Brewster's position, eh? Hasn't this come up before in their conversations? Ah, sudden General Zod! Cleaning lady at a top secret facility freely touches the tank while her superiors are in the same room and doesn't think for one moment why that might be an issue. Also, do top secret government facilities employ tons of janitorial staff? You have a lot of secrets flowing through this place and you just trust your cleaners to keep their mouths shut? Haha, <laughs> they've had this door open the whole time since Amphibian Man arrived? What kind of secret f***ing facility is this? Yes, pies for breakfast. Just just trust me on this. Or trust the judgment of people in this packed diner that only serves pie and is open early in the morning for some reason. I know Giles has a crush on the Dixie Pie God, but why does he keep ordering this shitty key lime pie? I know he's used his great love of key lime pie as his conversation starter, but you'd think at some point he'd be like, let me try a new flavor. And by the way, this leftover pie that takes all the space in Giles' fridge, beginning to look like a shrine. <laughs> Eliza and Giles are dicks to the people trying to watch a movie downstairs. Lyndon Johnson. Now a man washes his hands before or after tending to his needs. It tells you a lot about a man. For Michael Shannon's character, they just took lines from his Boardwalk Empire character to substitute for Richard Strickland. I never met a short man that stayed nice all the way through. Not shortest. You two, come with me. There are a billion janitors employed here, but this guy ran to the lunchroom to find the proper staff to clean up a mess. You will have exactly 20 minutes to render this, this lab immaculate. 20 minutes. God damn it, the amphibian man just took out one of this lab's most fearsome employees, but everyone's perfectly fine leaving these two cleaners in here alone? This lab is so stupid that it's a wonder the Russians haven't already completed their secret plan. This place is like the Hellboy facility, only before Hellboy. It still has Abe Sapien in it, played by the exact same guy, only without the David Hyde Pierce voice. Hellboy was directed by someone famous, too. I can't remember who it was, and don't have the willpower to look it up. Oh, I believe you, honey. Are you sure it was alive? Eliza and Giles have probably developed a pretty good way of communicating by now, but how the f*** did she describe what she just saw to him? Sure, free access for the cleaning ladies to just walk into this room whenever they please. If you can't trust your janitorial staff, who can you trust? What purpose does this tank window serve? Whenever Strickland is doing his thing, Amphibian Man is out of the tank, and they otherwise tether him in the large section of the tank. I guess they included this just in case he showed the ability to fall in love. <laughs> Foreplay. Eliza! What are you doing now? I guess this is sign language for, oh, you know, just casually interacting with an incredibly valuable, violent, and otherwise unguarded possible fish god. You? No siblings, Zelda? No, sir. That's not common, is it, for your people? That's 1960s. -est. They found her by the river in the water. Of course they found her in the water, because this movie is just one unhinged Dennis Hopper away from being ghost-directed by Kevin Costner. The world is sinful. Meet Richard Strickland, the founder of Cinema Sins. It's a lot less religious these days. I dragged that filthy thing out of the river muck in South America all the way here. So basically Eliza and Amphibian Man were made for each other, because earlier Zelda told us this. They found her by the river and the water. That would make the people who run the hotel and the lobster very happy. Man, for being a major character in this movie, Michael Stolbarg is almost absent for the first quarter up. So much so that when it does get to the reveal of him being a spy, I have no clue which character he is. Damn, Eliza has no fear of getting fired. 
Either that or the power of female boners is stronger than the need for job security. Why the hell are they mopping the exact same spot the other person just mopped? You know, Zelda and Eliza are together for every other assignment. So why is everyone cool with letting Eliza do this extremely important and secret room by herself? Jeez, did Eliza get so caught up in her dance routine that she didn't see or hear Michael Stolbar from Call Me By Your Name and The Post come through that door, which buzzes and beeps when it's opened? She should know by now that Michael Stolbar is everywhere and in everything. Copious cabbage cabal. Don't worry about that camera. We push him up at break time. And apparently nobody ever watches the feed to see someone pushing the camera to a different angle at the same time every day. This here is a blind spot. Spot shadowing. Fleming, I have to finish some things in here. For instance, I have to accidentally warn Eliza that I'm about to open this door. Then 100% of the things I had to finish will be finished. The one time we've seen Eliza not take her cart into the room happens to be the day Strickland feels the need to get his torture boner serviced. You want to put a man in space. He's going to have to endure conditions the human body just wasn't made for. This gives us an edge against the Soviets. So the Americans went through all this trouble to drag a sea creature from South America because it might help them with the space race? Man, we had all the time and money in the world back then, didn't we? Notice this MP guy here? Well, somehow, Eliza runs out of the room unnoticed mere seconds after this, and the MP guy isn't on the cart, so he must still be in the room not doing his job. So crack the damn thing open, learn what you can, and close up shop here. General Exposition waits to summarize this conversation until they're out in the wide open area, even though they went all the way up to the cone of silence to tell Hofstetler what the plan was. Get him out? What are you talking about? We have now officially entered the free willy portion of the program. He sees me for what I am. Am. Okay, I've gone as long as I can before taking a sin-off for Sally Hawkins' amazing performance, especially here, where she's acting her ass off with no words. And while we're here, Richard Jenkins is also great, so let's just remove two sins and move on so I can start sinning the fish f What the hell are you doing, old man? Oh, 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 oh. Hey, no, 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 not the counter. Take out only, you can't sit there. Holy sh**, the pie guy went from adorable to heartless bigot in seconds flat. What would be a good time for you, Bernie? And don't come back, this is a family restaurant. I have no one. I'm glad we could take care of Giles' two conflicts in a whole 90 seconds so that he'll help Eliza break Amphibian Man out of Occam Prison. Zdilish yemu injectsu. Injectsu. With a f***ing syringe? Wouldn't it be easier to just smuggle a gun in there and shoot it? I mean, the Russians have to know that thing bit Strickland's fingers off, right? Nam nožni Amerikansi nandilia tavo štobu učitsia. Betsy DeVos. Cadillac DeVille, best car ever made. Man, it's really gonna be hard to make this sale if he's gotta stand on that turntable the whole time. Oh, I think this is some of my best work. Yes, age 51. Why the hell do they have their ages listed on these ID cards anyway? Especially since they already listed their birthday. Also, if Eliza's supposed to be 25 in this movie, I'm just saying, I don't think she should be throwing stones at Giles trying to pull off 51. I don't mind that you can't speak either. Kinda gets me going. James Toback. Also, god damn it. We already know that Strickland's evil from almost everything he's done in this movie, including buying that Cadillac. Do we really need to see him get all rapey? Okay, yes, he took a survey of the stalls and found no one in them. But why would he do this out in the open when anyone can walk in at this very moment? Well, hurry up, I want to be home early. My feet are killing me. Hang on, their shift ends at 4.30? They only work 4.5 hours a day? I mean, that kind of schedule is almost worth witnessing merman torture. See, I just don't see how this isn't noticed after day. A minute ago, we saw Strickland watching these screens intently. And yeah, it's because he's lusting after Eliza, but you know an asshole like this loves watching screens for anything. That's very smart. Who do you work for? Well, I guess in retrospect, it doesn't really matter all that much, since I'll never ask you this again. Here you go. This water must be kept at 5 to 8% salinity. Not that she can't know what this means, but does she know what this means? And does she have the proper tools in her apartment to ensure this measurement? Man, it sure is weird that they have cameras in every room in this lab except for the one with a super amazing creature that should be watched at all times. What's that? What's that vehicle? Man who is suspicious about laundry van still hasn't looked at the camera that was obviously moved a couple minutes ago. Okay, so this is supposed to turn off all the electric equipment for only five minutes? That's some hardcore damage to the breaker box. When the power comes back on, will it be emergency power or regular power? Because if it's emergency power, why wouldn't it come back on immediately? If it's regular power, then this breaker box is f***ed. Oh my god. Why would they even unwrap him? Isn't it better to keep him buried in the towels for the clandestine mission? He's so beautiful. Because there needs to be a crowd-pleasing moment where Strickland's brand new Cadillac gets wrecked, Giles gets completely distracted from the part of the task that he's been dying to do since he arrived. Get the f*** out of here. Did I do that? It's not very well known that the then 42-year-old Richard Jenkins tried out for Steve Urkel on Family Matters, and it came down to either him or Julia White. None of the assholes shooting at the laundry van try for the tires, and there is seriously nobody near the exit. Yeah, this should be 5-8% to 8 salinity. It passes the eyeball test. Keep that up. Looking like you don't know anything. Really? In a crowded elevator? Jesus, can't anyone in this secret lab properly secret? What am I doing interviewing the f 
f***ing help. Well, technically only one actress from The Help, but I see your point. Man, it's amazing the amount of this stuff the fish man gets in this movie. This is why that revival of Alf never happened. Luckily for Eliza, Amphibian Man left convenient bloody handprints so that Eliza could track him like a discount Aragorn, and he didn't go far. Look, I know this theater isn't that popular, but the whole neighborhood was f***ing hopping a few nights ago. Not one mother on the street saw Amphibian Man walk in here. And it's at this point you realize she's really gonna f*** that fish. Ever since Clark Gable said, I don't give a damn, in Gone with the Wind in 1939, Hollywood has been trying to figure out how they could get interspecies human amphibian f***ing in a movie and award it Best Picture. It took 78 long years, but we finally did it, goddammit. Does he have a... F Meanwhile, speaking of Free Willy... Every other time Dimitri's met these guys, they've gone to a remote location, spoke some spy sh then went to the restaurant. So why are they literally coming over to his house here? Doesn't that blow all the covers? Eliza says, you know what? I'm gonna flood this entire apartment for my sex life. The theater downstairs doesn't make money anyway. Also, Eliza waits to pull this stunt until the one time we've actually seen patrons in this theater. Yeah, but if the cure for baldness was gonna give Giles some hair, why didn't he give him all his hair back? This is nice, but it's also a little half-assed. I have four paying okay. customers! I got the water refund! So I guess you didn't care about at least three people sneaking in, because there's at least seven people in this auditorium. I saw you giving free tickets to Eliza earlier, so maybe they also had free tickets, but if three of your seven people got in for free, does it really matter at that point? I've been dying for a movie to recreate the underwater sex scene in Color of Night, and I finally got it. No wonder this one best picture. It gives everyone what they want. Alien character suddenly becomes ill and has to leave its new family to avoid death cliché. 36 hours from now, this entire episode will be over. What the hell is with the arbitrary timelines in this movie? I mean, I know the general is an asshole and he wants to get done quickly, but I thought this was an extremely important asset. Shouldn't he be doing everything in his power to track that f***er down for as long as it takes? Unfortunately for Eliza, her upstairs neighbor just recently hooked up with a giant sea squid, and she tried the flood sex technique, and now Eliza has to deal with unwanted water dripping into her place. It's poetic justice, really. Back in the 60s, nobody was ready for Big Dick Alien Fish on Broadway, and it closed after only one performance. Those Philistines. You went away and my heart went with you. Look, this is lovely and gives Sally Hawkins a chance to step out of her character for a second. But it's also a jarring ass cut to a La La Land alternate reality. This isn't good. Whoa, I didn't realize their name was Octavia Spencer. I guess she changed it because there was another actor in the guild named that. This candy, it's cheap candy, but, but I love it. Even though he's got very little time to succeed in finding the asset and thus avoiding, I don't know, whatever the f***ing general threatened him with a few minutes ago, Strickland has time for this. What are you Where'd talking you take about? It? Strickland goes after Zelda first, despite the fact that Eliza is definitely the most suspicious person of the two. But then again, Strickland is kind of racist, so maybe he would. I'm still sitting this because it gives Zelda the chance to warn Eliza, who has just enough time for Amphibian Man to jump over her head into the water in a dramatic slow-mo shot as Michael Jackson starts singing. He's coming for you. You gotta go now, and you gotta take that thing with you. Strickland left the office prepared to bust Hofstetler, and hasn't been back since. He's also strung the hell out on pills, so how the f*** does he know exactly where both Zelda and Eliza live? Strickland notices the note on the calendar and sees rain docks. Those could be any docks, but he's going to find the right one anyway. Also, the fact that Amphibian Man is dying on this exact day, that Dimitri's being extracted tonight, that Strickland finally got on the right track, all on the exact day that Eliza had scheduled well in advance on her calendar. And Strickland can easily determine where they're going is a coincidence sandwich with extra luck sauce and a side of fluke fries. <laughs> Considering Giles ignores the gun that is still clearly in the bad man's hand, I assume he too wants to get shot and come back from the dead. <laughs> hey, it's a literal deus ex machina. All the police stand around watching two people dying and do nothing. It's kind of like the real Baltimore. Oh good, we get to have our splash ending. One more movie this seemingly original film is like. If I told you about her, what would I say? Hopefully nothing during this beautiful moment, especially since you've shut your yap for the last two hours. But go ahead and do your prose and your silly poem. Poetry and prose it out. It was a lovely little fish. And it went wherever I did go. I get reported, I come after you and the mute. You do that, Yolanda. Yolanda, it's yeah, cool, yeah. baby. It's cool. We still just talking. Don't tap on the glass. I like going this way, better than waiting in the line. <laughs> If you don't find that cheese-eating rat bastard in your department, it won't be me who suffers for it. Now, why would you have to remind me of that? <laughs> Dry land is not a myth! I've seen it! It was a 
fire, the chocolate factory. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Get the f out. Out of my car. Did I stutter? I think I'll miss you most of all.